Then let's continue with the delete operation. Delete operation, indicating that you want to delete the minimum value, involves the placing the former last item in the hole that is created at the root. Let's before we move on move into how do we do delete, let's take a look of the example directly. So saying that we want to do a delete operation, unlike insert, we need to provide a value to indicating what's the value we want to do the insert. For delete operation, there is only one location you can do the delete. And I repeat, there is only one location you can do the delete. That is going to be your root, which is 13 here, because that's all we cared about, the minimum value. That's the idea of the priority queue. So let us think about this. Say now I'm going to take away the node of 13 and this become empty. Obviously, it's not going to satisfy our first criteria. So what should we do? I know many of you may be thinking, let's take a look of the children to see which one is smaller. 14 is smaller, we move 14 up here. And then compare with the two children's find out which one is smaller, we put 21 up here, 31 up here. Magically, it happens to be successful. However, let me tell you, it's not going to be work like that. That will only work for this example. Think about this. Saying that this value, 16, if this is also, say, 13 over here instead of 16, if this is also 13, after we remove 13, this one, since it's a smaller one, it will come up over here. And then 19 is a smaller one, it will come up over here. You may think we complete the delete operation. However, you need to understand one thing. If this node is empty, then this is not binary heap at all. Because it's not satisfying the complete binary tree criteria. Therefore, we cannot do that way. Instead, come back to the, the descriptions of the delete operation. To delete, we involves placing the former last item in the hole that is created at the root. The hole is percolating down the tree through minimum children until the item can place without violating the heap order property. So it's the same thing. We need to take care of the very first criteria of the binary heap. While we remove the root 13 away, think about this. No matter what, after one deletion, this space needs to be deleted because we have one item short. That's saying the value of 31 in this example cannot find a place. Since the root has a place, let us put 31 at the root, which is the space that has been deleted, and then percolating down, finding that 14 is smaller one, so you can swap with that, 21 is smaller, so you can swap with that, and now compare 31 and 32, you know you don't need to swap at all. That is how we will be able to do the delete operation. So it's the same idea. We need to remove the space, and there is a place that we can put. So we put 31 up there. Compare with 14 and 16, swap with the children, and then compare with the two children. And of course, if the node is smaller than both of their children, then you can stop the operation. And that is how we will be able to do the delete operation. So let's take a look of another example. This is the binary heap that we built through insert one by one in our previous example. In this case, if we want to delete the node of the root, so five is taking care is taking care of. We need to put 18 back into the index of one and then compare with the two children. Again, to find your left index, you multiply your index by two. To find your right index, you multiply index plus one. So you will be able to compare with the two values, understanding that 18 need to be swapped, and you have to swap with a smaller one. So 10 will go up over here, which is actually the next smallest item in this example. Of course, 18 will need to continue to do the operation swap with 15. And that is why you can see we will be able to do the whole operation and then 
generating the right uh, index that we have over here. So you see that that's all the process that we have been swapping out through a process. Uh, if we go back to one by one that I have pre prepared for you guys, uh, delete the very first item, so we need to take that away, and then 18 we need to go up. So you see that 18 is at the index of one over here. And of course, it's not going to be correct because you need to satisfy the second criteria. So the roots need to check with the children's understanding that you need to be swapped uh, with the smaller ch child, which is going to be a left child. And then we need to percolating down until it's finding the right spot. And that will give you uh, the result of the deletion. If we delete one more element, it's the same thing. We need to taking care of uh, 10 will be removed and we will put 40 up over there. So you can see that in this case, we will have uh, 15, 18, 16, uh, 30 and 40. And of course, there is going to be an empty spot over there. And that is how we will be able to do the delete operation. Finally, uh, comes to our assignment. We have not have assignment for a while. So saying that we start with an empty array, just like we see earlier. First of all, I want you to insert five and then insert 30 and then either insert eight, insert 10, one by one until all of these elements are being inserted. I want you to show me what is this array looks like that corresponding to the binary heap after this insert of operations. So we basically try to create uh, the binary heap by insert all the items one by one. So that's the first question. The second question is that based on the binary heap that you have built, if we do one deletion, what is the array would looks like? In other words, what is the binary heap would looks like? So I want you to provide me uh, two arrays that corresponding to two questions. That is the simple assignments I want you guys to work on. Finally, we come back to the build heap operation. Saying that there are, there's one way that we can build up the heap by inserting all the elements one by one. However, there is a faster way of doing so. And how do we do that? It's actually pretty straightforward. Okay, let's take a look at this. Saying that we get a sequence just like this, we have uh, 15 elements in this binary heap. Of course, it's not satisfying the second criteria. It, however, do satisfy the first criteria because there's no null space in between and we have keep growing all the elements over here. So you can see that this is what it looks like corresponding to the array that we have so far. So first of all, what we need to do is this. We will do in the reverse order to make sure that the second criteria are satisfied. So you can start with 73, 83, go all the way all here, since they are all leaf nodes. These nodes satisfy the second criteria. It's possible that these nodes are not satisfying, but all the leaf nodes, since they don't have any children, they satisfy the second criteria. So in reality, when we look into the reverse order, the very first element that you need to deal with is the last item's parent. So you can have, you can say write a for loop or whatever you want to do, find what is the last item that you have. So the last item is 73 at the index of 15. You start with last item's parent which is at index of seven because 15 divided by two gives you the value of seven. In this case, you're starting with this node. Try to check with its children's 14 and 15, understand 63 is good. And that's what we need to check for this step. Then we move backward to the index of six, try to find its children. So your children is at 12 and 13, realizing that this is not in the right spot. So I want to percolating down, so swap with 25 and 45 so that we can satisfy the condition. And once that is done, we can move backward to index of five. 
for index of five, you know the elements that you store uh, for the children are uh, index 10 and 11. So compare with 10 and 11, realizing we don't need to swap. So we can go back to index of four. When we are index of four, you compare with the children, eight and nine index, understand that we need to swap with nine. So uh, index of nine, so we will swap the two and we move forward or backward to the index of three, understanding that the children would be at six and seven, realizing that six is 25, seven is 63, and the value I'm holding right now is 21. So it's actually pretty good. We don't need to do anything. So we move back to index of two, at this time compared with the children four and five, realizing that five is smaller. Both of them are smaller actually, and but I need to swap with the smaller one. So that 12 we need to go up, but that's not the end of it. There's still children. So you need to keep looking into index five, two children, 10 and 11, understanding that you still need to continue the swapping. So you will swap 47 with 12 and then with 37. So you can see that 37 is here, 47 is over there. Finally, the root. Of course, you need to percolating down, compare with the two children, index two and three, swap with two, swap with four, because uh, index of two, you need to look into two children, and then you need to continue doing so uh, by looking at the index of eight and nine. And when we are eight and nine, then we are uh, finding out that uh, index of nine um, since there is no children at all, that that is going to be the space that's holding uh, the value. And you can see that throughout this process, we can quickly build up the heap for all the values that we have stored in the array. And that is what we call the build heap function. It is faster than insert all the elements one by one. So finally, the last slide that I want to mention in this topic is what we call a heap sort. So you can see that for the priority queue, we always hold the minimum value at the root. So if we use a build heap function to build out the heap quickly, and then we delete the very first item, we will get a minimum value, which is smallest among all. If we do the second delete operation, we get a second smallest item. If we get three, four, five until the end of it, we actually generate all the smallest items through the sorted manner. So that in this case, we actually get the whole sequence sorted. This is what we call a heap sort. Build out the heap quickly and then write the loop and the loop size is equal to the n elements that you have inside of the heap and then we call the same amount of delete operation. So we will keep deleting all the items one by one. And of course, before you delete, you probably want to store the value or output the value. And the end result will get a sorted sequence. So this is actually going to be uh, the first sorted algorithm that we discussed in this whole semester. The last topic in this class, will, we will want to talk about multiple different sorting algorithms, but heap sort is actually a pretty interesting one.